All right, so uh, we're going to once again back, at, back into coding, and we'll be using some uh, simple conditionals today. So let's go ahead and open up our Visual Studio. Take a few seconds. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and file new, new project. And I'm going to call it. President check. We're going to check whether or not you're qualified to run for president. So let's go ahead and click OK. And it will automatically create uh, an initial form for us. Take a moment. So, and one of the things I want to remind you is that as you move around, you may see certain things go out of focus. Uh, by that, I mean such as properties, the toolbox. Let's see if I can get my, there we go, all right. And it, it will depend on context. So if I'm in a, a, a context situation where I can't place controls, you'll notice the toolbox changes to not having any controls in it because it doesn't make sense to drag and drop them onto this. If I switch my context back, you'll see it come back. Uh, now, you can auto hide these if you want the full screen. And what will happen then is that uh, this will disappear until I uh, select its tab. And you can see I can also group things together using the tabs. Um, so this is very configurable. And sometimes you'll get lost. And you'll miss a toolbox or, or, or the Solution Explorer come up here and look under view, often you can get back some of those things that are auto hiding and you can't find. Um, all right, so first off, let's go ahead and rename the form because form one may not be the greatest name. I am gonna use uh, sort of a Hungarian notation and what Hungarian refers to is indicating the type with the first few letters. Now, uh, I recommend that you use the humpback notation for regular variables. The only time I would use this Hungarian is for, for controls. And what you'll hear about is some people, there's a big argument about whether Hungarian is a terrible thing or not. And I think for controls, it's a reasonable standard. And you'll see as you go, uh, because of the IntelliSense, if all your controls of button are started with CMD, it will be easier for you to find them. Uh, people have arguments about this all the time. I, you know, it's up to you. I'm not going to get as long as you have a standard. What's what's important is a standard, not to have just changing your standard midway through the form. That's probably bad. Well, it's not probably bad. That's that's bad. So create a consistent standard. And in this case, we're, the standard is going to be that I'm going to use Hungarian on controls and, and the standard Camelback on all, all other things. I'll go ahead and I'll update the references. That is, it's going to rename everything to form check. This is going to be check for president. OK, so let's select this. I can change the properties so that this is something more appropriate, like, uh, what was it? Um, all right, so we'll call it check eligibility. All right, so one of the things I recommend is as you code, um, do it incrementally. That is, don't write all your code and then try to run it. Run parts of it at a time. So for our, uh, for our checking of eligibility, uh, we, there's three things we have to know. Are you a citizen? Uh, have you been here, in the, living in the US for the, for the last 14 years? And are you 35 years or older, right? So let's start with the, uh, with the first one. Uh, the first one we should start with, let's just start with age. You know, we've, we've seen age before and it's pretty simple. 
So let's go ahead with a text box. All right. And again, I'm going to use the Hungarian notation, txt, page. All right. So, um, and now let's go ahead and create a label. And again, one of the reasons we're doing this is just to get a little practice in, right? You should know how to do this. But at the beginning, it'll be nice to, you know, just do the same thing over and over again. You'll get very accustomed to how it works. And, and now, um, now, this form is, is sort of small, um, and the font's sort of small. Let's go ahead and, and uh, change the font. Let's make it a little bigger. Let's go with, say, 16, what do you think? All right. And notice that uh, the form automatically, the, the, the label automatically resized to accommodate that new font size. And that is because uh, auto size is set to true as the default, right? Now, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the font here. And obviously, uh, users like to see some consistency. So let's go ahead and make sure these two are both set at 16. Right? There we go. OK, so now we have a now we could go on and, and say, you know, put the controls on there for the uh, number of years in the US and, and create another control to to determine if not they're a citizen or not. But let's not do that. Instead, let's go ahead and create a button. Right. And since there's only one button on this form, Let's go ahead and make it nice and big. It's hard for them to miss it, right? And again, I'm going to use the Hungarian notation, which some people will complain about. I'm OK with it. OK, so now let's go ahead and change the text. All right. So now we have uh, the age, and we can check it, right? So hopefully you remember a little something about how that works. So I'll go ahead and um, double click this. And obviously, Recall what that does. I've double clicked here. If we look at my events, what's happened is it's added that event. Um, and you know you can go back and look at uh, in the Solution Explorer, you know you can recall that. Um, So here it is adding that event handler. So effectively, it's associating that method that it automatically created for us with that button, right? So now, what do we want this uh, to do? Well, obviously, if we go back to our designer, um, we want to take what's here. And uh, can we just simply uh, look at it and see if it's uh, greater than 35? Well, OK, so as you recall, let's go ahead and we'll create a variable. Now, we could do this on the fly, but I'm going to, most of these for now, I'm going to just create variables to get you accustomed to creating variables. Now, uh, if you recall, it was a text box. Because I'm using the Hungarian, you can see it's txt. And I can come up with it quickly. Now, remember, I want the property associated with that object, which is the text property, right? Which, this is, uh, 
this is text and our integer is age. That's an integer. So we're going to have to go ahead and convert that. And you'll see these types and it might look a little confusing. You see this 2 int 32, which is the one we're going to use. And if you're not sure about what to convert to, um, these uh, these types in C sharp have associated types in the CIL, uh, CLI, and you can see here it says in 32. So often, if you want to know the specific type it translates to, you can mouse over it, and we can see we're we're going to convert this text into that. Now, one of the things we know is if if we don't give it a number here, if we give it like uh, Fred, this is going to crash, and we're not going to worry about that yet. All right. So now we have the, uh, we've converted it to an int. And let's go ahead and check it. And we'll say uh, age is greater than 35. Do we want to say, what do we want to do there? Think about that for a second. Do we want greater than 35? Well, as long as they're 35, it's OK. So let's go ahead and say greater than equal to 35, right? All right, so now um, let's just indicate that the person is old enough to run, right? So we use our message box show. A lot of things we could do here. We could have a label and update the label. But for now, let's just do the message box show. So and remember that all statements terminate with a semicolon, right? And you can see here the if. This is the standard form of the if, right? No semicolon at the end of that line uh, because really this is the, the entire conditional, right? Uh, but you do want con semicolons at the end of every, every statement. There we go. Okay. So, well, we could go ahead and... and worry about our other eligibility criteria, I don't recommend it. Let's go ahead and try this out, see what happens. See if I've uh, managed to do this correctly, right? All right, so hopefully I don't get any build errors. Dun, dun, dun. That's a little slow. All right, so there's my age. It's very big. I think it's because I made the the button gigantic. All right, let's go ahead and try it though. 35. So I put 35. You always want to decide what you expect to have happen. So what we expect to have happen is 35 is greater than or equal to 35. We expect the message button message box to show. And there it is. Now correspondingly, that's one check. And this 35 is a good because it's right on the edge. We like to check uh, the the edges of our ranges. Uh, so let's try 34. And sure enough, nothing happens, which isn't, from a user's perspective, isn't, isn't that great, but it is uh, what we've coded so far. All right, so let's close this down. We can hit the X to do that. That's fine. Let's go ahead and maybe, maybe we overdid it with the, with the size of the. Okay. That might be a little, a little easier, although it was very easy to read. Um, all right, so we've got the, the, the check on the age, and now let's go ahead. Now they have to have been here for 14 years, so let's go ahead and um, create uh, a similar one for the, um, the number of years in the United States, lived in, you know, continuously. So let's go ahead, and again, you notice I copied and pasted, which is nice because it will give me the opportunity to have the same base settings. So I'll call this LBL years in US, right? Again, using the Hungarian notation. Uh, let's go ahead and copy that and I'll paste it and I will line it up. I will line this, this up. Whoop. Whoop. A little hard with my clicking, I guess. 
So, um, and actually what, what that did, of course, was it created uh, the click event for me, which I don't really need a click event for my label, um, right? I need a click event for the, the button. All right, so now I have this text box. I'll go ahead and rename it, go over to the properties. And I will call it TXT. Right. Um, TXT years. TXT Notice how the label automatically resizes to fit the, the text. All right. So once again, I have the the same basic um, setup here. I just want to change the add to the check eligibility to actually do the same thing for the years. Right. Hint. Notice I'm using the camelback notation for this. And TXT, you can see they come up quickly for me. All right. And again, it's the text property I, I want, which, you know, text property is, is, a, is a string. You can see the the string right there again and with a semicolon okay now I want another conditional similar to the previous one except I'm going to do it for here's in US and it's going to be greater than or equal to 14 right and now I will have a message box again change the message a little bit. Now, if you think about what's going to happen here, you know, think about what this will do for a second. And then let's go ahead once again, we're going to do this incrementally. Let's try it. Still kind of big. Let's go ahead and I'll say 35. I'll say 14. Again, what do we expect to have happen? Um, so think about what, what should happen. Okay, so first it comes up and gives me the text box, the, the message box for old enough to run. And now it brings up the second message box. So in the same click, I'm, I'm sending two messages, which might be a little awkward, uh, but the purpose here is just to get a look at conditionals, right? Let's go ahead and go back to our form designer. Maybe change this size a little bit I think we'll move this way up here so it stays on the form obviously um, that is it stays on the visible portion of the form all right Go ahead again, just take a look. Yeah, it's a little better. Still kind of big. Um, so, let's see. again, let's try 13 and 13. What do we expect to have happen? Well, this is less than 35 and this is less than 14, so we should get no text. And we do. All right. So now the final item to see if we can actually run for president is the 
citizenship, right? You have to be a citizen to run for the President of the United States. A pre uh, citizen of the United States, that is. I go with my clicks again. All right. And if you want to know how to undo those, come over here, and I can, right, I don't really need this. So that will undo it. However, if you actually look in the code, you will still see, no, 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 it deleted that. That's nice. There we go. So. So let's see if I can get rid of that one. That's the text box in US text changed. Hey, hey, hey. Let's go back to that for a second. No events there. No, no. Okay, here's the event that I was. There we go. So let me go ahead, and I don't need this either, right? I'm not really going to worry about the event text change at this point. But again, this is a different event. It's it's an event. If this text changes, I can go ahead and automatically run a method. We're not going to do that right now. So we go back. Let's go ahead and save this. We should have gotten rid of any of those extra methods. There we go. All right. Okay, so then uh, we need to add the final, and let's use a checkbox. This is a new, you haven't seen a checkbox. Uh, checkbox is uh, either on or off, effectively, so what does that sound like to you? Maybe a Boolean value? So we will change its name and change its text. Right? And now, um, this is interesting because we'll get to see this in action here about having a Boolean value directly. So, so no different from from these guys, right? Except that now we can actually get a Boolean value directly. So I notice there's two two bools here. Uh, so there we go. Citizen equals. And what was the Hungarian notation? That's not the right Hungarian notation, but we'll live with that for now. Um, so, and it has a property that happens to be checked. And if we look at this, we can see that checked is a Boolean property. You know, so, so effectively, uh, the type of that property is in fact Boolean, which means we can do this assignment. Remember, declaring variables, this has to match. So this has to be a bool so that we can assign it to another Boolean variable, right? All right, but now if we go to our conditional, we can simply say citizen. And that's because it is not, there's nothing we have to compare it to. Often you will see people do something like this. Do not do that. It's not necessary, and it, and it actually leads to confusion. It's it's true. It's already a Boolean value. Just do this. If citizen, and then we'll throw up our message box, right? So, So you're citizen -y enough to run. Mm 
really not not a word but anyway uh, so so let's go ahead and of course the first thing we want to do is, is try it out and we're still gonna have to put ages in here because if we don't it will crash and we don't want to crash right now but there are things we can do to get around that uh, which we will talk about a little later um, so let's go ahead and check our eligibility okay when, with this checked it gave us the message box let's uncheck it nothing all right now this isn't the most useful well I mean certainly you should be able to know if you're a citizen or not and if you've been here long enough and you're old enough uh, that you should be able to do that in your head right so that's not the point of this but it's also a little awkward the way it displays information effectively it it uh, um, it doesn't wrap it all together and give a single message which would be nice so can we do that let's see so let's go set the eligible to true okay. and we're gonna add an else here and we will say if if they are greater than equal to 13 eligible is already true but if it's not we'll set it to false yeah. and we'll do this for all three of these so that means if any one of these fails we can throw up a message box that says you aren't eligible right? so we can come up with a uh, slow down a little bit and go with this you can see it so we have the if for the 35 we have the else so again if any one of these cases turns out to be false it will in fact make eligible false right it will set it will assign the false value to eligible all right so now let's go ahead and do something with that information so if they are eligible we will put up a message box that says you can run and and if eligible isn't true let's have an else that throws up a message box that says you cannot run so uh, now if we were to run this it's still going to be a little a little clumsy because we'll have these other message boxes here um, but we can fix that maybe a little, a little later right so let's let's just put in for now zero zero and we'll check eligibility you cannot rent you're too young you know it doesn't tell us what's wrong but uh, it does indicate we fail so let's go ahead and put valid qualifications up here so let's put 35 14 and a US citizen and check our eligibility now it's gonna walk through all three of those again resident long enough citizen enough and you can run right so let's see if we can get this to, to be a little smoother um, you know and, and maybe create a string for that message so let's say string right and I'll initialize it to nothing and then instead of creating a message box I'm just going to assign message equal to this now one thing you want to note that if you declare things inside conditionals that will alter their scope so if you only need something inside the conditional that's fine but if you need it later you have to declare it before the conditionals that you use it in all right so let's uh, we'll keep the other stuff right now 
you come down here, let's do this. Right. So the question is, what do we want to do here? Well, um, the message is that uh, we already we might already have something in message, right? So what we want to do is we can use message plus, which is fine. Which is this? This is concatenation. Let's get rid of that extra, right? So, and let's do the same thing down at the bottom here. Right. We'll use concatenation, but this time let's use plus equals, which turns out is pretty much the same thing. It's the same thing as saying message equals message plus. All right. So now I'm, I'm concatenating this. Yeah, it's a little messy, but we'll live with that for now. So now, um, let's say, let's do, message plus equals run and let's go ahead and finish this with a semicolon of course come down here you can run but we'll change that now to you cannot run. I'll add a space at the beginning to make it so that even though we're going to have a kind of a messy blocks of text there, it'll it'll concatenate it all together, which is just basically clumping the strings together. That's what concatenation means. Uh, so then we'll go ahead and do our show. Oops, sorry, message box show. So now think about this, how many message boxes are going to pop up? So let's see, let's give it a shot, let's find out. Again, if we don't put things in here, we're going to error out and we're not going to solve that problem today. Uh, let's go ahead and, and check. So I was a citizen enough, but I cannot run. So it doesn't, it doesn't tell me what was wrong, it just tells me that this was right, but then I can't run. So uh, can we fix that? Well, sure. At the same time we set the eligibility to false, we can go ahead and do the same thing with the message. And notice, in, the, in this first 35, we don't have to use the plus equals, right? Uh, because in both cases, in both the, the if and the else, it's going to be the first part of the message. And I'm just going to stick not in front of that. All right. And then finally, I'll grab this. Oh, oh sorry. Down a little further. Uh, grab this guy, and I will... Add him, and there we go. All right, so now, uh, hopefully it will, will give me a, a slightly clearer message. Just again, this isn't pretty, but, uh, so now it should tell me what was wrong. You know, it should tell me what where I didn't qualify. So let's just do this quick. So 14, 14, so this is, this is good enough, this is not, and I'll say, let me check the eligibility. Not old enough to run for president, long enough to run, uh, resident long enough to run, uh, citizen enough to run, citizen enough to run, you cannot run. So uh, that, that's correct. Again, that's not the best message in the world, but we can work on cleaning that up a little later. But you get the basic idea of one, both using your variables, 
converting them to the appropriate type as needed. You can see some, some, some properties are automatically the correct type. Here we've seen a, uh, the use of a comparison to create, this is a Boolean expression, and we've conver it converts into a simple Boolean value uh, based on the value of age. Uh, same thing for years and age. But then we get down here, we see uh, citizen, which is simply a Boolean value. Uh, therefore, it doesn't need to be compared to anything. It's already a Boolean value. And also eligible is already a Boolean value, one that we set based on the circumstances as the program ran. ran. All right, so we'll get a chance to do this in class, uh, something similar, where you get to use some conditionals. And uh, that's it for today.